Welcome to Health Plus Tech, the podcast where we explore the law that applies at the intersection of healthcare and technology. Hosted by McGuire Woods, episodes feature healthcare innovators and updates on the laws that apply to digital health businesses. Welcome to the Health Plus Tech Podcast. I'm Kristen McDermott Woodrum, a partner in the Atlanta office of McGuire Woods. I'm joined by my partner, Holly Buckley, who is based in Chicago and chairs the McGuire Woods Healthcare Department. Holly and I lead the McGuire Woods Digital Health, Technology, and Innovation Practice and are hosts of this Health Plus Tech Podcast. Today, we are excited to welcome to the podcast, Brad Busick. Brad serves as the Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer for MultiCare Health System, a not-for-profit health organization based in Tacoma, Washington. Prior to joining MultiCare in 2020, he served as CIO for McDonald Miller. He led strategy, planning, and architecture in the office of the CIO at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation from 2013 to 2015 and served as Chief Technology Officer at Paladin Managed Care Services. Brad holds a Master of Business Administration and Technology and Innovation Management from Pacific Lutheran University, where he also serves as adjunct faculty member for the University School of Business. Welcome, Brad. Hey, it's good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Oh, our pleasure. To kick it off, Brad, tell us more about yourself. You've grown up in the IT space, but you're somewhat new to healthcare delivery. How has working outside healthcare helped you in your role at Multicare? Yeah, uh, awesome question. Um, I'll say that uh, the transition from outside of healthcare uh, into healthcare has been incredibly humbling. Um, while there's certainly uh, parallels, um, a server is a server, uh, a CRM is a CRM, uh, a cloud is a cloud. Um, what is different, I think, is the application of those technologies and those capabilities, and frankly, the impact that it has on patients. If a cloud server goes down at an organization that's outside of healthcare delivery, you might not have people be able to access their email or, or you know, generate a report. If technology goes down inside of healthcare, it actually impacts patient care. You've got frontline staff that move to paper, um, and it actually has the um, opportunity to have a really significant uh, impact. But I'd say that um, sometimes in healthcare, uh, having an outside perspective has been incredibly helpful, uh, where we get to think about things in a different way, um, but also think about uh, the application of technology uh, and how it actually might um, accelerate some thinking that has been stagnant for a really long time. And that can range from pharmacy delivery uh, to taking monotonous tasks off of um, frontline staff and automating. And so it's been a little bit of a blessing and a curse. I'm still learning the acronym SOUP in healthcare, um, you know, three and a half years later, but I um, feel really uh, fortunate to be doing what I'm doing. That's great. Uh, so what is your role right now at MultiCare? And tell us what all that encompasses. Yeah, so the first thing you'll need to know about me, I'm I'm not a big uh, title guy. I um, have the title of, of Senior Vice President and CIO. Um, before the CIO role, I was the Chief Technology Officer for MultiCare, and so that afforded me uh, a lot of um, really awesome uh, learning. I actually happened to start at MultiCare the day this little thing called COVID um, was announced, and I got pulled out of new employee orientation uh, they said, hey, are you are you Brad Busick? And I said, yeah. And they said, we'd like to have you come to this thing we're setting up called a command center, and we need your help. And of course, COVID unfolded. This was March 16th of 2020. Uh, honestly, it was the biggest gift for me because I, I got to shortcut <clears throat> all of the traditional uh, introductions and onboarding and new employer orientation that takes months to come up to speed. Uh, this was just a straight baptism and let's get work done together. And the relationships that were formed during that time have proven to just be invaluable because I think you you bond with people when you're doing meaningful work and nothing was more meaningful at that point in time than trying to figure out how we navigate this as a, as a healthcare system. Today, uh, my role is um, both at a strategy level, um, but at a tactical uh, level strategy as we map out the the capabilities for multi-care and look at the things that we want to be in the next three years, um, but also trying to skate around the ideas uh, that have plagued us in the past, the things that are holding us back, whether it's allowing people to work faster, 
um, or giving them the ability to work from anywhere that they are. So both tech debt remediation, um, but also looking ahead to um, the building blocks that we need to put in place now uh, as we as we grow and mature um, here in the Pacific Northwest. Thanks, Fred. And aside from successfully navigating COVID, can you talk about some recent successes at Multicare? Yeah, you bet. I'm going to first start culturally. Uh, to me, this is the foundation of everything that you do. You can go put in a brand new ERP system or upgrade Epic. If your culture is a disaster, none of the rest of it matters. And the thing that I'm most proud of in the last three and a half years is that IT has become uh, a place of destination at Multicare. People want to leave other parts of Multicare to come into IT because of the cool stuff that's happening. And it's it's actually less about uh, our what, and it's more about our our how. Uh, how we treat each other, how we treat our customers, um, how we serve uh, one another, um, and a relentless focus on execution uh, that has been really, really um, contagious, uh, frankly. That cultural investment has manifested itself in a bunch of really strategic uh, implementations. Um, uh, mentioned right when we first joined, uh, we just went live uh, five days ago with this little uh, go live called Workday um, across 22,000 uh, employees, full suite launch of HR, supply chain, and finance, replaced 30 different point solutions, um, and it has become a benchmark uh, case study for a go live. We closed down our supply chain command center after four days, uh, less than 40 overall tickets total. Uh, we have no critical tickets since launch. Everybody got paid on time. And the customer experience has just been incredible because of how easy um, Workday is to, to use. Um, that's our most recent. But parallel to that, uh, this year, we've launched a brand new cloud-based access center. So we sunset an antiquated uh, system that um, nobody wanted to use, no one wanted to engage with. And the new access center allows us to not only help train and track uh, the performance of our um, customer service advocates um, using um, artificial intelligence, but it also engages our patients in a really powerful way through SMS and IVR. So that if you don't want to talk to a human, you don't have to. Uh, I can get my pharmacy refilled literally on my phone or over text message, and then I can have it delivered to my house so I don't have to go stand in line and wait at a Costco. Um, so that happened in Q1 of this year. Um, aside from those things. We also uh, launched ServiceNow for um, our enterprise um, portfolio management office as a service desk replacement, um, but also from a um, asset management um, perspective. And then it, it was part of our um, employee resource center when we launched Workday. So now our entire HR organization is um, using ServiceNow to manage cases in a really, really beautiful um, and elegant way for our customers. Um, and those are some of just the, the back end things that remediated technical debt. From a forward looking perspective, uh, we have a little bit more sizzle. We've invested heavily in our um, Epic uh, platform and upgraded to foundation this year. Um, so trending towards uh, eight and nine stars. And uh, we launched our um, autonomous robot program in January of this year um, using a, a platform called Moxie that is um, not only grabbing headlines, but more importantly, taking a ton of manual work off of the plates of our frontline providers so they can spend time with patients at the bedside. And so that's that's been a big, big hitter for us this year as well. Fred, I wonder if you can maybe connect the dots, dots a little bit, because um, the first thing you mentioned in terms of successes was culture. And then you talked about the successful rollout of Workday and how you'd had no mission critical tickets and it had just been a tremendous success. How do you attribute the success, in part the success of an implementation such as work, the Workday success to culture and why is it so important in an organization such as, as yours and specifically within IT where you're spanning the entire organization um, to have such a great culture and how does that lead to good outcomes? Yeah, I love that question. Um, I actually just wrote about this um in a blog post uh, last week on LinkedIn, and it's called uh, How Do You Make 22,000 uh, Customers Happy at Once? In that blog post, uh, what I articulate is uh, the approach that we took with partnership with the business uh, was it wasn't an IT project. 
It was an HR project. It was a finance project and it was a supply chain project. And the partnerships that I developed with those three leaders in those three business units weren't just um, a beautiful governance slide and a PowerPoint deck. Um, These were relationships that we fostered. We had meals together every month. We talked about the elephants in the room every week. We had a Teams chat that goes back two years. And if you go through that and call that, um, you started to just watch the relationship uh, blossom. And um, what happens when you do that, I think, is that there's no ego in me approaching someone that isn't in my business saying, hey, why are we still, why are we building Workday the way that we used to do it? Let's build Workday for what we want Multicare to be two years from now. And that's received uh, by a partner when there's trust as like, wow, I had never thought about it that way. Thank you for bringing that forward. And I'll tell you that was and is the secret sauce for why this thing is has been a complete home run. And if you can extrapolate that, it tones get set at the top. So then that cascades down to leaders in the HR department and the supply chain department and the finance department and the IT department. And suddenly it becomes contagious. And the next thing you know, you have um, a benchmark install like we just had. I will tell you that that's incredibly rare uh, for IT to have that kind of partnership. And um, when you discover that magic, uh, you want to harness it. Uh, there are some folks that are actually sad that this implementation is done. Uh, I will tell you, I've already turned my sights to phase two. Um, we acquired a hospital system in uh, January and we're going live with uh, Workday for them um, in Q1 of next year. And so we're we're sparking the magic again. We're, we're bringing that crew back together and we're going to go get after it for round two. Um, and this has been, uh, I think, some of the really fun um, cultural wins. It's hard to quantify and measure, except when you're on time and on budget for obviously a double digit uh, install like Workday. Congratulations on that tremendous success. And I love that you use the words magic and sizzle. Um, It's very exciting. And you touched a little on AI. And I'm just curious, what do you think the near-term impact of AI will be on healthcare? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm incredibly bullish on it. Uh, You know, when my former uh, boss, uh, Bill Gates, says, I actually think... Uh, this could be as disruptive as the internet. Um, I agree with him. Here's what's happening culturally. Uh, If you kind of hop back in the time machine, when the internet was born, you had every academic institution in the the world saying, how do we shut it down? Because students are going to cheat. They're going to use it to do their homework. Uh, We we don't know what it's going to do to our society, right? People are never going to talk anymore. You're starting to hear that same talk track around... Um, AI. And if you unpeel it, if you really kind of demystify it, um, what we're really talking about here are large language models, which have been around, frankly, for a really, really long time. The question is, why hasn't healthcare had the brains to be able to harness it? Other organizations have figured this out outside of healthcare. So I'm going to go all the way back to how we kicked this conversation off. It takes both the clinical application and the thought leadership from outside of healthcare to actually figure out how do you make this work and how do you do it in a safe and scalable way? So is Multicare turning on chat GPT for every provider in the system so that we can copy and paste our records out of Epic and say, what should I appreciate about Kristen's medical records? Uh, No, we're most certainly not doing that. Um, But what we are doing from a, a prioritization and governance standpoint is saying, How do we think about utilization of these large language models on things like free text survey responses that come back from our patients after a multi-care visit? Let's use uh, AI to summarize that and and theme it out for us. How do we use uh, AI to write prior authorization letters uh, for us um, where our pediatric um, endocrinologists put patients on growth hormone and you have to write a letter with patient details to the insurance company? I don't want my doctor spending time writing those letters. I'd like them to review the letters that have written for them. And I think that'd be an awesome uh, use case. And then just quality response letters, right? Like we have a quality team that handles patients' concerns. These letters are incredibly detailed. They go to insurers, they go to patients. We should actually be using AI to help structure and format those to make sure that we have our providers working at the top of their their license. And that's just on the, the clinical side. 
when I think about AI for all the stuff that all of us do every day, Multicare executes 185,000 virtual meetings uh, a year. Well, if I don't have to have someone taking notes because they're recorded and the meetings can be transcribed and I can assign action items, or if I could just run AI and say, tell me who talked the most in this meeting and fast forward to every time Brad said, here's what I need. That is a good use of time because not all of us can be in the same meeting at once. And so in a time where we're being asked to do more with less, these are the applications I think for our, for not only healthcare, but I would just say the industry um, as, as a whole in technology to really start applying these capabilities. Thanks for those thoughts in the specific examples. That's fascinating. Um, I wanted to also ask you about the consumer and what are your thoughts on how digital health will help health systems be more consumer focused? And could you talk a little about initiatives you're working on in that area? Yeah, absolutely. You know, for for the longest time um, since I came to healthcare, I've never appreciated or liked the word digital front door uh, because the truth is um, patients come in through windows, the chimneys, the back door, the front door, um, however they can get in, they'll come in, right? So the, the real question that we we challenge ourselves at Multicare to think about is, um, how do we meet the patient where they are? And uh, oftentimes that means a mobile device, uh, that means a tablet, that could be a browser, that could be when they're driving in their car and they want to call our access center and use our IVR, they don't want to talk to a human. So when we think about you know consumerism, uh, we've put a few things in place to pressure check uh, over the last three years, and they've uh, they've been um, e- exceptionally well received by our, our community. Uh, the first has been through our urgent care uh, clinics, which are our indigo clinics. They don't feel like hospitals. They don't feel like medical office buildings. They're modern. There's music. There's espresso makers in the lobby, and they're staffed by uh, a physician. And um, you know, it's an in and out deal, right? Well, when you make that appointment, you get a text reminder that says, hey, you're uh, eighth in line right now. Your wait time is about seven minutes. Why don't you go ahead and come in now? When you come in, there is no paperwork for you to fill out. We already know who you are. Um, Come on in and get checked out. It's embarrassing to me that that description is an anomaly in healthcare. Like, why do we expect, like, I want that when I come to Alaska Airlines. I don't expect to have to go fill out a bunch of paperwork and crap when I'm standing in line waiting to board my flight, but why do we allow that for healthcare? And so changing, I think, hearts and minds in this, and then frankly, just breaking a lot of glass is exactly what we've we've done. Uh, we've taken it a step further with something that we're launching in Q1 of 2024 um, with regards to um, drone delivery for uh, pharmacy. And um, we're going to take advantage of it for intra-department uh, delivery for lab specimens. I don't want to have to deal with Seattle traffic uh, anymore. So I'm more than happy to have a drone take something from our uh, Tacoma hospital out to our lab and then back. But what about the patients that can't get into a multi-care? Um, there's a ton of um, ferry traffic here. If I can save a patient two hours in ferry time and deliver their medicine to them at home via a drone in 20 minutes, and they're willing to pay for that service, why wouldn't we go and do that? And so we'll be the first healthcare system on the West Coast to launch that. Those are consumer type of experiences that all of us, I think, are going to become accustomed to. And if you'd asked me nine years ago, if any of us would have thought that I could hop on my phone right now and have razors delivered to my front door uh, in the next two hours, um, I'd thought you were crazy. And yet we all expect that now. Why not healthcare? And so that's exactly what we're going uh, to do. And I, I fully believe that things like drone delivery will become um, a commodity for everything that we're doing, food delivery, healthcare delivery, uh, et cetera. So those are just a couple of ways we're saying yes to try to meet the patient where they are. That's fantastic. And uh, I, I'm almost loath to ask my last question because I feel like we've somewhat covered it and that we've talked about drones and robots and AI already, but uh, Brad, what are you the most excited about in the next five years or so, uh, whether it's for uh, kind of healthcare more broadly or for multi-care, what's really uh, getting you excited? Yeah, what gets me excited is um, the organizations that have 
uh, said yes to investing in technology is going to be the competitive advantage between the haves and the have-nots. It's really easy to hide behind double-digit margins when times are good. When days cash on hand are low and your processes are a disaster and your data is a disaster, suddenly the organizations that have tight data, they have tight processes, and they have partnership between IT and the business, this is when mergers and acquisitions start to become very real. And um, what excites me about that is Multicare is in the former position where um, we've invested and we're in a prime position for maturation and growth. Uh, but also from a patient care perspective, when was the last time anyone heard someone rave about how awesome their um, you know, mammogram went the previous week? Never, except it's very common for us to say like, oh man, that restaurant's amazing. Or my flight down to San Francisco was awesome. Well, Multicare wants to be doing uh, things for our patients that allow that to become commonplace. And we think that those experiences manifest through patient engagement, knowing patients, meeting patients where they are, and and literally forcing digital transformation. Because at this point, uh, we can no longer admire uh, the problem and and allow healthcare to function the way that's functioned. So uh, excited to, to watch uh, the haves and the have not separate themselves here. Amazing. Uh, Brad, your your energy is contagious. Um, this has just been a fascinating conversation. We we really appreciate your time. Um, you can find uh, Brad Busick on LinkedIn. Um, and again, this is the Health and Tech Podcast. I'm Holly Buckley. I'm, I'm here with my partner, Kristen McDermott-Woodrum with McGuire Woods. Thank you for listening.